the squash plants are just traveling all over. My husband was so excited. <laughs> he said, I saw something weighing it down. I have to go and pick it. Check it out and pick it. He says, there's so many squash in here. Just trailing around on one vine. Ah, oh, this is so exciting. This is the butternut squash that my husband picked yesterday from the garden. So I just wanted you to see what it looks like. And these are the tomatoes that I also harvested from the vegetable patch. And also the little ones, uh, eggplant, some summer squash and peppers. So my vegetable garden is very fruitful. But this is the, the news of the moment. <laughs> this butternut squash. Let me hold it up for you. It's huge. It was growing over there by the uh, front garden. You know where I was showing you all of those beautiful big leaves? Yeah, this is what it looks like. And he likes it like this. I mean, he would eat it when it's a lot more um, ripened. But there's something very tender about it um, like this and um, he's excited to put it in his um, food with his stew and fish and we're going to be enjoying this for a couple of days so let's just take a little closer look at this front garden here front side garden this is definitely what I call my urban cottage garden and this is what gives it that name that title and look at these it's it's different plants just all together creating a look a joyful look look at how this squash this is crawling up on my uanus bush the leaves are huge and then this this thing this is a very weedy seedy thing but it's beautiful i don't have the heart to pull it out because look at how it just accents the leaves the contrast between that and the leaves fantastic and then with the purple perella and the hydrangea with the leaves oh my goodness In it here, I have tucked away a, um, I don't know if you can see it, I'm gonna zoom in. You see that? That's my cantaloupe, cantaloupe. And that cantaloupe vine is traveling all the way up to on the um, Hawan Yuanimus. Look at the beauty of this with the purple perella, the leaves of the squash or pumpkin. It's a combination of both because I planted both pumpkin and squash back there. And the hydrangea. Oh my goodness. It is so beautiful. And then peeping up the purple, purple flocks back there. This is definitely the end of August garden. Now my neighbor's tree also complements the garden. Uh, she has this purple maple. It just looks so great with my garden. 
the tree back here, this maple, purple maple, it is a beautiful backdrop to the garden. And um, we see the purple perella at the bottom here. And then when you go right up like this, you can see the tree. And it's a borrowed landscape, but it just adds such a nice um, covering for the garden here. It just, you know, like it overlooks it and um, adds beauty to the garden. And I didn't have to plant the tree. <laughs> it's so pretty. Good morning, good morning and welcome to Catherine's Garden. I just had to come out here and um, just show you the beauty of the garden on this late August day. Yes, it is beautiful out here. The sun is shining on the grass. How beautiful this is. The garden looks fresh and alive. The temperatures are cool and um, refreshing and the garden is just glowing with the spectacular beauty so i just want to, you to see this the glowing of the garden it's glowing hallelujah and it's looking alive and awake and beautiful look at this and it's amazing how the light just shines through on the leaves. Look at the purple perella, how it's just sparkling with the beauty of the light. And even the coleus. Look at the glow through the, the grass variegated grasses yeah. and even with the dahlias what a beautiful beautiful sunny glow it makes the garden look magical to me the sun is shining right there it makes you want to come in to the garden and to walk around and see what is happening to even come closer it's like it's beckoning you come close to me take a look and see look at the beautiful flowers and this is um, late August so it's been a little dry however um, Early in the morning, the dew shines or lands on the grass and uh, it like replenishes the earth. And it's like an inner beauty that occurs. It's, it's just really, really nice. And here, look at this. Finally, I have a cabbage that looks like it's developing a really good head. It's it's nice to see see that because I was a little discouraged about that. Um, a lot of them did not make it, but that one has. And look at this. Remember when I had transplanted these plants? If you hadn't, you can go back and watch some of my older garden videos. But look at how this is coming together so nicely. Um, and this is what I saw in my mind. Vision is so important in the garden to have a vision of what you want to see. And when you have that vision, then you have to work it. You have to do something with it. And when you do that, you can then produce something very beautiful. And this looks really nice. Mm. It's almost like magical, you know. And then when I look here, you
you can see the color changes for the hydrangea mm -hmm. and look at it, how it, it just blends in so well with the um, with the purple perella look at the combination I'm trying not to give you my shadow because the light is so bright but it is magical out here what I want you to see is the look at this this is beautiful <laughs> Uh, what I want you to see is the hibiscus, how it's really come into bloom. But in the meantime, just look at the light on the grass. It's amazing how the sunlight, and then you can see the dew on the grass. It's just magical. And this is what I want you to see. Yeah, my hibiscus. Some of the other blossoms, the one that were, were there before, they faded, but new blooms are coming forward as you can see. Soon though, we're going to have blooms on every single stem uh, or branch and um, it will fill out, but it's a gradual process. So each day is a new expression of just joy and it just makes me so happy. Also on top here some of my um, roses are opening up the last flush of Eden Climber Rose and that is just so nice so with the purple perella it looks really really pretty I'm gonna back up so that you can see this so you see that is that pretty The sun is just shining so brightly and beautifully on the garden. And that is the highlight of this garden tour, is the beauty of the sun on the, in the morning. Um, here is my butterfly bush. And I am so pleased with it. It's actually turned into a, a tree and it's growing up tall here. I have another one too that I planted. There were two of them and it's further back um, but it's more of a shrub size. But you know what? I took a clipping of this butterfly bush and I put it in a pot um, because I want to create some more. It, they also say that this produces a lot of seed and that it's a spreader. Well, I'm hoping that it does spread throughout my garden because I do want a whole lot of, of uh, these beautiful blooms in my garden. You know, one thing nature offers us is plantings for free <laughs> through the seeds. And also you can propagate by cutting things and dividing things and spreading things. That's what I've done. A lot of now this is a special mint this is um, apple mint right here you see the furry seeds now they're gonna drop seeds here um, I love this mint and um, yes it's it's spreading throughout the bed but I do love how these little furry tops just pop open you know the seed tops the flowering part and it just it looks so pretty because it's a, like a lightish purplish color lavender 
and um, it just blends well. I'm so happy with how it's blending in here with the hosta leaves. These hosta leaves have been fantastic. Now, this is faded, yes. This is my gladiola, and I'm glad that it showed up. What I'm really impressed with is begonias. I was not a fan of these begonias because I planted them before. I really liked impatience better. Um, but this year, mm -mm, they have just added so much to my garden. I don't know if you're suffering like how we have with the loss of impatience. They used to be a staple in my garden, especially at this time, but it seems like they die back really quick, that there's some sort of disease and it has never recovered yet. But these begonias, these begonias are now my favorite and I shall be planting them every single summer right in this location uh, because now is when I want some color and they really have shown up. It's beautiful. I want to show you my rose. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. It's going to open up and I'm going to continue to show you pictures of it. Yes. Okay. Now my um, bee balm is finished. I should go in and cut it down. Um, but then I'm also thinking that it will seed. Now is the time for seeding too. And um, if I let it seed, it might just uh, spread some more throughout the bed here. Also, it's offered as food for the birds. I don't know if you see there's a bird in the middle here of this um, tree. I don't know if you could see him. Mm -hmm. I know you can hear him. You see him? Yeah. The birds love this um, garden because it's like a sanctuary for them. And then um, these flower tops, the seed heads, are like food for them. And they are happy for that. Now these yellow flowers are waning. But instead, you're going to see the wild asters coming up. This is going to be... Yeah, the wild asters and it's going to be really pretty. That's re usually the last flower, flowering plant in my yard, my garden. Um, then look at this. I am in love with begonias. Look at how pretty they look. The big fat begonias and these little pink begonias. I love it. Mm. So over here, coleus are something else that I love in the garden and they look so beautiful with the purple perella. I love this combination and again something that's going to be in my garden next year again. Yes, you know it's going to change up occasionally but I know that this is a winning combination right here. My um, Asian pear tree, yay! Look at that. This is the first year for this pear tree in my garden. And it produced pears. I am so thankful. Um, just the size of them. I'm so amazed at it um, and that it produced. Now look at this. I love this. These asters, absolutely pretty. And so it's created a nice little vignette here. This corner, very nice, with the coleus, the sun and patience. Yes, that's a winner also, something that I will be planting again in the garden. 
and the um, the white variegated grass with the yellow flowers that have popped out like that they're just they're just spectacular I love this and you can see the yellow of the flowers in the coleus the pink and the burgundy it's just all of it coming together nicely right here in this corner so now I'm going to just come around this bed and show you the apple tree. Wow, I've had to tie up the apples because something was eating my apples and I must sample my apples from my apple tree. This apple tree I planted last year also in the fall and um, a branch broke. I don't know what happened something was trying to eat those apples and it, it broke my branch but I tied up the apple and this one here too so I'm just waiting a little bit before I sample the apples but I longed for an apple tree longed it was the desire of my heart to have one and um, it it has matured let me just show you this peach tree from this back you can really see it here. You see the peaches? Mm -hmm. So it did produce. It's just something um, is eating my peaches. Something, some sort of peach fungal disease or something. They don't look like how they're supposed to look, but. I'm still grateful. I'm grateful. It's very dry. However, we're getting rain today and I'm just saying hallelujah to that. It's so good to know that we're going to have rain. My sedum is doing very good here. Let me show you the sedum. That sedum I got from my Aunt Tanti's house. Uh, when she passed away, I dug up her sedum and I said, I'm going to keep this sedum in remembrance of my aunt. And um, I had a clump and I've just been dividing it and putting it in different parts here in the front garden. And also, I think there's like a piece in the back there. But yeah, and have it border the garden and when I look at it I, it reminds me of her garden she was a gardener and um, she was like my grandmother because my grandmother died before I was born but my aunt Tanti I lived with her and uh, she was like my grandmother and she loved to garden she had a front garden she grew different uh, flowers she loved flowers and um, so I, I have that in remembrance of her. Here, um, I'm still waiting for my okra. And my squash are just growing and trailing. My husband loves the squash. He actually cut one of the squash off, of uh, the banana squash off the vine. It was huge. And um, I'll show you before we end what it looks like. And he just loves it. He just loves it. He said, I saw it. And I said, I'm not going to let anything get it. So he went and cut it. <laughs> but look at that, how they're just trailing. Mm. In here I have what is called Russian sage. It smells so good, the Russian sage. Yeah. And see how it looks nice with the purple parada? Mm -hmm. And then the trusses on that um, hydrangea tree. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> Everything, as I said, is a little dry. We've been trying to keep up with the watering. 
but there's nothing like Mother Nature uh, watering the garden, and she's going to do that real soon. I love these. Look at that. Co cosmos? Cosmos. Cosmos. I believe these are Cosmos, yeah. Look at this white. They're double layered. Isn't that pretty? Um, this year is the first time, not the first time, but I haven't planted Cosmos in a long time and I decided to throw out a pack of seed of Cosmos and just see what happens. And this is what happened. And this pack of seed is from the Dollar Tree. Do not despise the, the Dollar Tree seeds. They can produce some beautiful blooms. And it costs you less than a dollar, I think four, four dollars. So from a 25 cent pack of seeds. And this is what I'm experiencing now. Beautiful, look at this one. Isn't that pretty? Mm. It's very pretty color. I mean, I need to cut them back a little bit because it's, there seem like there's a male and a female flower. Uh, the males are really taking over like these branches right here. I mean, they're good fillers, but they, they overtake. And here I have some uh, marigolds trying to peep their heads over. And um, these are my zinnias. I bought these zinnias as slits, and, you know, seedlings. And they're um, coming in too. Look at this. I love zinnias. I love zinnias. I love the simple zinnias. I think they're so beautiful. The pop of color that they offer is so amazing. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, I planted these zinnias from a seed pack from the Dollar Tree. And this is what it's provided me with. I love the different variations. It's absolutely pretty. And it just works so well with the purple Perella. Zinnia. Zinnia is just one cottage garden seed or flower. One, you know, the flower that is so simple but yet so beautiful. And then there's so many different types of zinnia plant um, different different types but I like the simple ones and uh, here I also have marigolds and I planted that from see I love that as well. I will always have marigolds and zinnias in my garden. Marigolds and zinnias. Yep. The nasturtium plant just continues to flourish here with flowers. The flowers are edible and delicious. It has a bite to it. Look at this one.
I will definitely I think they're gonna reseed by themselves I don't even think I'm gonna have to do anything with this nasturtium because there's so many flowers the beads have just been loving it and I think that they will automatically come back next year but I'm gonna try and save some of the seeds too when I pull it out I will gather the seeds this is a highlight The peppers are getting really ripe. I'm going to have to do something about these peppers shortly because they are ready for picking. They're as red as ever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do that harvesting. Look at this. An orange too. I don't know what this one is. If you know what it is, just write it down what kind of pepper this is. But it's telling me that it's truly ready. Mm -hmm. My watermelon is doing well too. You see the peppers? No. So that's the next thing, a pepper haul. <laughs> Here's just an update on my lettuce leaves in my lettuce bowl. The lettuce are growing. Yay! And these are beet seeds. This is the best the beet seeds have ever looked, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I planted some out in the um, vegetable patch, and they did not come up like this. But this is fantastic. I am so pleased with this. Also, the update on my cucumber fall planting. Look at that. Those cucumber seeds are coming up. And I just noticed too that the carrot seeds are coming up too. I had popped some um, carrot seeds in there too. And just said, let me just throw the seeds in. And look what we see today. Yeah, what a blessing, what a blessing. Let's look at this pot. The same thing. They're coming up, coming up. The first two leaves, that's the beginning. Thank you for coming on the tour with me here in Catherine's Garden. And I am so happy to have you um, just follow me with my journey of gardening. It's been such a blessing. And we are really at the um, end of August here. Um, and I want to capture all of these pictures because I know that the winter months are coming and I can always go and look back, and you can too, of the beauty of the garden. Now, I just wanted to show you this here. Now, this I had shown you earlier, the Budlia plant. Well, I just had a cutting and I put it in some soil and now it's flowering. So now I have a free Budlia plant. Well, fall's coming, but for right now we're celebrating August. Well, thank you for watching Catherine's Garden. Have a wonderful day.
Enjoy your garden. Get out there and enjoy it while you can. Thank you for watching. Bye.